Good afternoon. Uh, another busy morning this morning. Been to the gym again. Loads sorted out. But um, you may wonder what motivates me to go to the gym all the time. Uh, it's not about uh, physique. It's not about um, health being healthy. Well, it kind of is. That I suppose forms part of it. The number one reason I go to the gym all the time is so I can eat like this. Oh, now I'm full up. Um, I could do with a nap, but I'm not going to because what I want to talk to you about today is um, kind of putting the record straight, if you like. So you may remember, I'm sure you do, last year, all those newspaper reports uh, dramatising the future of owning an electric car and how if uh, you owned an electric car and you plugged it in and then came indoors and turned your kettle on, uh, all the electricity in the world was going to come down your plug and nobody else would ever be able to use it and then things would blow up and it would all be terrible and the world would come to an end or something like that. Um, from those newspaper reports, the actual slightly more serious ones, if you want to call them that, were suggesting that when we all kind of convert across to uh, electric vehicles in the future, then our peak electricity um, demand, if you like, will go from around 61 gigawatts um, and increase by 50%. So you can add another 30 gigawatts onto it. Uh, and they were saying that there's no way that the UK could cope with that in any way, shape or form. You'd have to build another 10 nuclear power plants just to power all these vehicles. So what's been really nice to see is that um, National Grid, they're the people that kind of uh, oversee all the um, power distribution here in the UK. It was their report that was being quoted uh, by all the newspapers. And uh, yes, some of those figures absolutely were quoted in that report, but the newspapers took them in isolation. Uh, they took the high drama figures without the context around it to come up with everything will explode if you turn your kettle on. As a result, the National Grid have um, published a second report. It's a three-page report. I'll give you the link to it so you can have a look for yourself. Basically counter-arguing the newspaper reports. And they make some really interesting points in it. Uh, and the report is basically around uh, looking at different scenarios in the future. And they go from everything from a, a kind of a light use of EVs, hybrid vehicles in the future, to a probably what's going to happen, a combination of both, but mainly EVs. And then they look at an absolute extreme where um, the economy grows brilliantly, uh, the cost of EVs, the prices tumble, there are no hybrids or ICE vehicles at all, and everybody's driving around in an EV. So they, they structure it in those three ways. And then they give you the, um, the real answers and the real power demands that we're going to have uh, 2040 and beyond. Now I've got to get ready to pick the kids up, but um, let me start with where are we at the moment? So at this time, we kind of fluctuate day by day. So uh, off peak, we might be about, uh, or sort of between 20 and 30 uh, gigawatt, um, gigawatts of electricity being produced. Um, absolute peak as we said is probably 60 61 gigawatts but the kind of the peak time the general peak peak time is that kind of half past five to six o'clock time when the factories and the commercial premises are still open and um, people are starting to get home from work so that's where we have the real peak now normally that sits sort of 45 to 50 gigawatts um, sometimes a bit higher and as I say every so often it will peak to about 61 uh, and that's influenced by the time of year and everything else. So what the National Grid have done is they've averaged um, it out throughout 365 days a whole year uh, and they said that our average hourly uh, usage is about 38 gigawatts. <music> So as I said before, they looked at um, some uh, very different parameters from um, there being very, very few EVs on the road right up to there being all EVs on the road by a certain date. Now, it's the latter that these figures have come from. So they've, uh, they've 
looked at a set of parameters where in 2025 there will be a ban on the sale of all fossil burning uh, cars. By 2040 there will be no fossil burning cars on the road in any way shape or form and that includes hybrids so it will be purely a country full of EVs. They've gone further then and said that uh, there will be no regard to any environmental factors. There will also be uh, no regard, you know, the, the country will be very prosperous. Uh, the people charging their EVs won't care that uh, peak time, the cost of electricity is substantially higher than off peak. So they will be happy to charge at peak time. So as you can see, real extreme parameters are really setting about or setting the picture of a country whereby we don't care, we've got loads of money and we pretty much do what we want with our electricity. If that was the case, that very tight period of time, around about half past five, for a short period of time, they predict that we will have a surge in demand of 30 gigawatts. And that's where that figure's come from. So in my view, completely unrealistic. That I can't see happening at all, especially the way the, uh, the economy and just generally our outlook as humans on the environment and where we want to be going. It has total disregard for that. So that is how they have got to that figure. Now let's look at reality and let's look at uh, the parameters they set based around what the government have uh, predicted. And I have to say, having read it, I think it's a, it's a very sensible outlook and I can see this is where we're going. The way they describe the future being is that uh, they will pretty much be no purely fossil burning vehicles. And we're looking around the 2040 mark here. There will be a small percentage of hybrid vehicles, they're talking around about 6%, but the vast majority of people, uh, and they have talked, put a figure of 85%, will be driving electric vehicles. In this scenario, uh, they talk about uh, a world where electricity tariffs have changed, and they've changed to a point where you pay more for your electric when the demand is highest. By doing that, obviously, we then have to think more about when we use our electricity. Uh, and this also falls into line with a, a world where people are a lot more understanding about the environment. Uh, and because of that, they've changed their habits and their way of living. Uh, and I think already we're seeing that happening and we're heading towards that. Now, in order to make efficient use of electricity off peak, we need smart chargers. And Again, this isn't unrealistic. We're already seeing in the UK with the new Nissan LEAF being launched, uh, the ability for it to uh, put electricity back into the grid uh, or your home uh, and also draw at the correct times. Uh, and it does that via a smart charger. And it does that via an electricity company who offer you the service to have um, charging, whether it's off peak uh, or at the time the vehicle needs it. There's, a, I believe, at least two companies that have already announced in the UK that they're going to provide that service when the Nissan Leaf comes online. So that is, is something that's already here. And something they don't mention in this uh, secondary report is where the power is going to be coming from in the future. And of course, renewables. It doesn't talk about solar, wind power, uh, tidal power. None of that's mentioned. So you add all that into it, all of a sudden the the draw on the grid as it is today is much much less and um, I'm sure I and others will uh, ultimately start putting solar panels on the roofs of our houses and um, it will become less and less and less and those peak times if we've got these vehicles that can talk to the, uh, our, our house through our smart charger the vehicles themselves will be, be putting power back into our houses so as a result uh, based on the figures projected by the national grid they can see a five six percent rise in the demand at peak times on the national grid which as I've just described is a, um, a deficit that can very very easily be filled and um, actually we're not far off it you know our, our 
system and our structure at the moment is pretty much there anyway so all those naysayers that are out there again trying to uh, do down EVs uh, once again uh, if you actually take time to read the facts and look at um, actually where we are it just works it works however you look at it it works from a convenience point of view of being able to charge up at home uh, it's not going to cost the environment anymore it's not going to ruin our electricity supplies it just works every angle you look at it and um, the more efficient they get the bigger the batteries get the more range they get the quicker they charge the better and better and better that becomes so that's where we are and I'm very nearly at school now so I'm gonna end today's vlog hopefully it's made sense and it's been of interest to you uh, if it has then um, subscribe to the channel if you're not doing so already uh, and remember to uh, like and share and I'll um I'll see you again very soon take care when can I play Minecraft again when you're good <laughs> and you don't make windy noises why <laughs> can you not be good Why don't you think you can be good? <laughs> you just can't. Why not? Too hard. <laughs>